If you look around my office, you might realize I have kind of a love for dark, twisted cartoons. And a lot of that may be because I grew up with a lot of dark, twisted cartoons. Now, I'm not talking about the ones like Batman or ones that were meant for older kids. I'm talking about the ones that were meant for little, little kids, and they probably should have been made for little, little kids. And I loved the hell out of them. I enjoyed how much they scared me. I loved how every time you got through one, you felt a little tougher. So I'm doing a series reacting and reviewing them. We're gonna analyze how creative they are, how dark they are, and if the dark twisted tone was warranted. So join me in taking a look at some dark tunes. You know what I think of when I hear Betty Boop? Freaky ass funerals! Betty Boop and Snow White was released in 1933, several years before Disney would do their version. Both are animated classics, but for very different reasons. Let's take a look. Made a pen and ink. I'm happy to say several Betty Boop cartoons are getting a bit of a resurgence because uh, not only of how beautifully animated they are, uh, but because how weirdly dark some of them are. And you're gonna see this one and probably draw comparisons to Minnie the Moocher. That one is arguably a little bit more famous than this one than praise for using Rotoscope with Cab Calloway. Uh, Rotoscope, if you don't know, is the art of uh, mimicking or even tracing over live action so the animation seems more real. Well, that one is an amazing cartoon and we'll definitely talk about it another date, I think this one is better. There's a lot more creativity, a lot more surrealism, uh, just as much going on in the background as in the foreground. One of the reasons for that is because even though Fleischer is given credit for directing it, this is really Roland Crandall's cartoon. Apparently, uh, he had been with Fleischer Studios for several years, and uh, they said, you know what, just do your own cartoon, do whatever you want. And so he took inspiration from what they did in Minnie the Moocher, and he combined it with his own exercise in strange, bizarre, dark, weird weirdness that you see here, and I think he really took it to the next level, to a point where this is often called one of the best cartoons ever made, and you'll see why. A fun bit you may or may not know is that Betty Boop wasn't always human. She was actually a dog originally, and that's because uh, I believe she was in a Bimbo cartoon. Bimbo was also a dog. They said it didn't make sense if Bimbo had a human uh, girlfriend, so they originally drew her this way, and then they showed the picture side by side, and they looked at, you know, the attractive woman and the dog, and they said the, the attractive woman makes no more sense. So they went with that, and uh, she just exploded. She became this huge, huge star. So you're gonna see other characters in this, like uh, Coco and, uh, like I said, Bimbo. It's very similar to, like, the Looney Tunes and Porky Pig. Porky used to be the big star, but then Daffy came along, and uh, Bugs came along, and they kind of became the big deal, and that's what happened with Betty Boop. So those characters are still there, but they didn't usually star in their own cartoons at the time. It was mainly her. And I think my favorite compromise is that they took her droopy ears in the original, and they turned them into earrings. I thought that, that was such a clever work around. I wanna see my stepmama, stepmama. Now so far this is a mostly typical Betty Boop cartoon. Uh, back then, uh, stories didn't need to be that concrete. They were more an excuse to do uh, a lot of visual gags, uh, just to do everything in animation that you can't do in live action. There's pros and cons to that. The cons are, you know, you want something that can be more dramatic, you want something that can be more realistic. Uh, when Disney did The Three Little Pigs, it was celebrated for being something that had like distinct characteristics and had beginning, a middle, and end. It was one of those revolutionary cartoons uh, that changed the animation, but uh, you do lose a little something here too because you can just totally explore uh, the imagination and motion and shapes. There's just so much that can be explored when you have no limitations whatsoever. I wanna see my stepmama. My stepmama the queen. Case in point, anything can talk in a Betty Boop cartoon. It doesn't matter what it is. In something like Three Little Pigs, that wouldn't make sense, but here, you can do whatever you want. Wow, that was a Disney lawsuit waiting to happen. That wouldn't fly today. Notice the background too, we haven't really gotten to the dark stuff yet, but I mean just look at that chair. The chair has a few faces in there, some of the sculptures in the background. This is much more detail in a cartoon like this than you would normally see. Off with her head! A lot of Betty Boop cartoons at the time definitely had kind of this edge to it, uh, not just from a, a sexual angle, although they definitely did. If you look at some of the older ones, man, there's stuff you couldn't get away with now. Uh, but just also kind of this mean-spirited angle, like, you know, she could just say off with her head, but you see her do the fingers and the thumb falls off, it gets cut off. I mean, it's such a grisly idea, but because anything can happen in this world, uh, it, there's just this extreme freedom, uh, it really allows you to just go all out. 
Again, how does she get out of this situation? The tree saves her, because everything's alive. You're noticing this isn't anything especially dark. Uh, yeah, it has a little bit of a mean edge to it, but nothing super dark out of it, but it's coming up. So here we are, we're almost halfway through the cartoon and we're given the seven dwarves. Again, story is just not a huge element here. And the way she gets into this coffin and then she quote unquote dies through the snowball becoming a box, the box going to the water, the water becoming ice, the ice now becoming a coffin. I mean, what a stream of consciousness that is. Uh, and again, when you're not held down by uh, a story you necessarily need to have a beginning, middle and end, uh, it, you can be allowed to do something this strange. Am I the fairest in the place? If I were you, I'd hide my face. <laughs> Wonderfully creative. I think that's a great example of just two very different styles. You'll get the transformation from the Disney version. It's big, it's huge. You got her hair turning gray and screaming and everything. Here she just takes that mirror and puts it all through her body and becomes someone else. I mean, it's something that's super simple, but it's just as creative. It's two totally different styles and they're really still, even though they're very different, they're still wonderfully creative. Folks, I'm going down to St. James Infirmary. So here we go. This is where we get a lot of the Minnie the Moocha uh, imagery and Cab Calloway now uh, takes over singing. And it just comes right out of nowhere and nothing even really uh, uh, tips it off. Again, that's part of the fun. There's this unpredictability that the cartoon can just go anywhere in not just visuals, but tone as well. And this is where the rotoscope starts. You can tell the way he's moving now is very different. It feels more fluid. It feels like there's a lot more motion to it, a lot more frames to it. And this is really why I like this one more than Minnie the Moocha. Look at this background. There are tons of faces back there and you would miss them if you weren't paying attention. There's so much crazy imagery. And if you look closer, you can always see like a new face you can see like a new image back there but in the foreground you have this wonderful animation of uh coco here dancing that was again taken from uh cab calloway this wide world over. i love this thing i love this thing i love how it moves realistic but it's not given the proper uh proportions that a person usually does you know yes you have legs you have arms but the arms are up here and the gap of the legs goes all the way up to like your chin and then the eyes are a lot bigger it's something where when you have the walrus it's like yes that's exaggerated too but it looks more human that that doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. Same with the pictures in the background. Look at those things. Those are just... Any one of these background characters could be an album cover. I mean, they look that great. Look at those things. Look at those things. Give any of those characters a cartoon, I'd watch it. Put a $20 gold piece on a lot of you are probably familiar with uh, Cuphead. Cuphead took a lot from Betty Boop. But right down to Cab Calloway, there's a character that's very, very similar to him as well. The way the background moves as well, because in context of the cartoon, is the ground moving? Is the background moving? You know, how's it work? Uh, it's not only very dreamlike, but uh, they keep coming up with different images and different characters and different faces. And it's something they don't have to do. Just uh, the ghost there dancing is enough. That'd be entertaining enough. They even put like little owls and witches' heads and stuff like that. But having those different images in the background just elevates this to a new level. There's just always something new to see. Magic mirror in my hand now, who's the fairest in the land? If the queen, by the way, sounds very similar to uh, Betty Boop, it's because it's the same voice actress. Mae Quistel, I think is how you say her name? And she was acting all the way to the very end. In fact, you probably recognize her as the uh, aunt from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And she turns into a monster, because of course she does. And of course the monster isn't going to look like anything you've ever seen before. Who the hell would design that? Again, a lot of Cuphead inspiration here. I mean, the face going towards the camera, I mean, that's something a lot of bosses in the game do. I, I mean, this design just looks like a monster you would fight in Cuphead. So again, just a lot of great inspiration. Definitely would not see something like that today. <laughs> Yeah, I know what our cute cuddly character will do. You grab her tongue and pulls her insides out until her skeleton is on the outside. It won't frighten the children at all. They'll love it. They'll absolutely love it. 
<laughs> and again, ends very quickly because they really don't care about the happy ending. They're like, and everybody's okay, okay, whatever. They want to spend all that time on the background, on the singing, on the animation, on the dark imagery, and... I really think it's fantastic. I think the motion in this is amazing. The creativity is just stellar. Uh, I think because it just goes from one weird dark thing to another, and it kind of comes out of nowhere too. Like, even though the first half has, like I said, this edge to it, uh, the second half just goes out of nowhere dark. I mean, you would not predict that the second half of this cartoon was gonna be like the first half was suggesting. You wouldn't even look at that second half and think it's Snow White. You never would. Even though it's something where there's not really a, a beginning, middle, and end like a lot of cartoons have, uh, that I also think is very much a positive because you can just go wherever the animation leads you, wherever the tone leads you, wherever the shapes lead you, wherever the shadows lead you. Uh, and I think that's just a wonderful way to be super creative and open up the mind and just sort of see where it can venture. So even though Mindy the Mucha has uh, very similar elements, and it was the first one to kind of do this style, especially in a Bay Boop cartoon, uh, with, with the rotoscope and the dark imagery and such, uh, I really think this one takes it to a new level and it just has so so much more going on in the backgrounds, in the foregrounds, uh, with what you can do with shapes, with what you can do with movement. I just really think there is an abundance of morbid creativity that has little to no limitations. Hey everyone, I got a couple of these lined up. If there's any particular cartoon you want me to look at as being very dark or twisted, leave it in the comments below. Again, I'm not really looking for movie scenes or cartoons meant for teenagers or older. I'm talking about ones meant for little kids, but still scare the shit out of you. Whether it's an old cartoon or a new cartoon, let me know what you want me to look at. <laughs>